Welcome to Professionals and Coffee, a volunteer collective for brewing networking opportunities. I'm Carolina Salinas, founder and host of this initiative. And in this episode, Professionals and Coffee will talk about communication, EDI, and networking with Karen Trovole, communication strategist and consultant at Cricket Communications. And as a co-host, today we have Chandra Kala Sharma an international student from the PR Postgraduate Certificate from Seneca College. Welcome to Professionals and Coffee. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carolina and Chandra, for having me. I'm really happy to be here. I look forward to sharing some of my experiences with you, your viewers, and your listeners. Thank you, Karen, for being here with us uh, to be a part of this coffee chat today. And um, thank you so much, Carolina, for having uh, given me this opportunity again. It's my immense pleasure to be here. Um, to Just to give a background to um, Karen, um, I'm from a very tiny Himalayan country in Asia, that is Bhutan. And as a newcomer, I really felt um, overwhelmed by uh, the system and the life here, and particularly the work culture. Um, that is why I always felt the need uh, to address this, especially by talking with my seniors and talking with my guests over here. Uh, so I'm really excited to learn from you through your experiences and through your journey in the communication field. And I'm really fascinated by the position that you are in right now and all the work and experiences that you have had. Um, as James Clear in his book, um, The Atomic Habits, uh, rightly says, quote unquote, the outside world only sees the most dramatic event uh, rather than all the work that preceded it. So as we see you in this position right now, we just see where you have reached and what you have achieved. Um, and we hardly try to notice your journey. So what were some of the smallest steps and activities that aided you in being proficient in this field of communication? And what keeps you motivated? Well, Chandra, it's lovely that you're here. Congratulations on being part of that program. It is a very good program. And like yourself, I was once upon a time and you come into Canada a little bit longer than you, but the same thing. And I experienced a lot of what a lot of newcomers do. But I'll tell you, um, while you're right, it looks to the outside world that something is, is successful and it's easy. Um, you know what they say, nothing worth having is ever really easy. And for me, it was always about learning, always be learning, always be networking, and always volunteering. And to me, I see those as an overlap. So if you volunteer, you meet people, you network, you build your network. And that's actually been the bedrock for my growth professionally and personally, just meeting people and constantly learning. And there are so many resources out there. I'm not sure if I mentioned it before, but I'm also a member of the International Association of Business Communicators, the IABC. I am currently the Vice President of Networking and Professional Development. And um, there are a number of resources with the IABC, but as well as with CPRS. And, you know, these, these opportunities are there for us to learn and grow and meet people. And that really um, are the things that really helped me throughout my entire career. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Uh, I really loved it when you uh, mentioned about uh, always be learning and volunteering. And uh, through all the activities too, I'm also trying to learn and volunteer so as to understand the culture here, because it is drastically different from where I come from, the culture, the way we work, the way we, the way we communicate. So yeah, um, there should be always a heart to learn more and also participate in voluntary activities so that we can get well in this um, country and uh, the way we work here. When we also talk about your journey, I would like to know um, how did you feel when you first uh, joined the communication industry as a manager of marketing and communication or even before that? And how do you feel now and what kind of changes do you see in yourself? That's an interesting question. I really, really love my profession. 
And it's funny you say I was born to be in it. Um, when I was a kid, if I could share, um, the one thing my teachers always wrote on my report card is Karen's a good student. She's lovely to have in class, but she talks too much. So being in communications really made me feel at home. I have been actually in marketing for a long time. I was what one would consider a purist marketer. I have an MBA in marketing and I worked strictly in marketing for many years. And I was working at one of the large banks some years back and the senior vice president sort of worked with me a while and then offered me the role as a, a communications advisor and strategic communications market, um, strategic communications manager. And moving from a purist marketing role into communications, I wasn't sure anything about it. I wasn't sure if that was for me. So I did a lot of reading. I did not want to feel like an imposter, even though my senior vice president felt this is something I could do and do well. I wanted to make sure that um, I I wasn't doing the wrong thing or I felt really comfortable in it. So I started to do a lot of reading. And that's when I, I came across the International Association of Business Communicators. I then joined them and I then got my designation as an accredited business communicator with the IABC. So throughout that journey of learning, I realized Maybe my teachers were right. Maybe I did talk a lot, but I also listen a lot, which is very, very important in communications. And from where I started to where I am now, I, I have to say I made the right decision, even though it happened as a very happy happenstance. It was the right decision for me. And I absolutely love communications because it's not just about writing. It's about listening. It's being with other people. It's understanding other people and also understanding businesses and the goals of a business and helping to achieve the business in the best, most effective way with all the tools that we have available in a very harmonious manner. So um, where I started and where I am today, it one would never call that a straight line, one would never call that a a bendy curve. It was more like a spider web, but I got here. It took a lot of twists and turns, but I got here. Wow. Congratulations on all your hard work being off. Thank you. Um, you know, it's never easy and everything takes time and everything takes practice. And listening is not just listening with words. It's also about listening to what's not said. Listening to body language, nonverbal cues. And what I have learned um, especially since the pandemic. Before the pandemic, we would sit in a room with our colleagues across the table. We could see the physical actions. We can see when someone's closing off, not agreeing. Now, it's a whole new talent one has to actually um, harness and, and perfect because just like we're doing this, this conversation today via Zoom, that's also a whole new um, skill trying to listen to what someone's not saying while you're not physically in the room with the person. Now you have to learn the different physical cues that someone may have because all that's part of being a good communicator. It's about listening to what's said, listening to the body language and listening to what's not said as well. Yeah. I totally agree with you, Karen. The third question that we have for you is, what does a normal day in the life of Karen look like if we, including yourself, watch it as an outsider? <laughs> I don't know that there is such a thing as a normal day. That's really a good question. I, I could tell you how I plan my day. So normally, I at the end of each workday, I take 10 minutes before I leave, whether I shut down if I'm working uh, remotely or if I am in the office. I take 10 minutes of that day and I look at the to-do list I had and I break out my day in chunks of time. So the things that I had to do today that did not get done and I prioritize and reprioritize, but I also make sure that my time is set up in such that I give myself enough time to do the emails maybe three times a day. I look at the meetings that we seem to have a lot more of since since we've been working remotely. So we go back to back on Zoom. And so sometimes I have to assess whether some of the meetings are necessary or can I delegate to someone 
to attend the meetings. Um, you know, if I have writing to do, if I'm working on a strategy, I chunk out my time in such a way that I'm giving attention to whatever um that whatever I'm working on at that time, I'm giving it my focused intention, uh, attention, and I'm doing it with intent. And that way I don't waste time. That way I don't drag on something. I give myself a certain amount of time. I work on it. If I don't get it done, I don't just eat away into the other time. I look at its priority level on my list. And if it's something I could come back to the next day, I do that. But I, I try to make sure I put in time for breaks because self-care is also very important, even if it's to get up and take a walk outside and come back. And that's very, very important. But uh, it's, it's bringing all the aspects because, as you know, we spend a lot more time at work than we do in our own homes. So it's bringing all the aspects and making it balance. Self-care, professional development, whether it's looking at a webinar during the day, you chunk out an hour, maybe it's during lunch. I do learning myself just again to keep learning and keep abreast of the trends that are happening in communications just to understand better of what's going on. But I try to keep a balanced approach in my day. Of course, that said, the best laid plans, right? But at least there is a plan. And usually, at least if you have a plan, you can fall back on something. If you have no plan, you're kind of starting at zero and it's very difficult to get going in the day. You're all over the place. With a plan, you may not get to half of the things. Sometimes you may only get to three things but you have a plan that you can work and rework. So I would say a, a normal day for me is starting with my plan and working that plan and reworking that plan as I have to. I think you have made a good point in terms of uh, have balance because as a, for all the PR and communicator practitioners that uh, are listening to us, it's really important because we are multitask and it's important to, to keep doing uh, what we enjoy as a professional development course, webinar, take a, a yoga course. And, uh, and it's a good habit that you, you mentioned, uh, to have a, 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 like a kind of priority. So to do this, uh, to think in advance what you are going to do the next day. And I really agree with that. And uh, my next question would be, um, if you look back uh, on your progress um, as a communicator or uh, as in the field of being in, uh, um, being in the field of marketing, uh, what milestone do you still cherish that you have created or that you have achieved in the field of communication? One success that stands out in my mind is I worked for a large division within a large institution. And at that time, I was the only person in that division. And it was a very, very large division. And I had to find a way to get the work done anyway. So I set up a community of practice within the division. It was voluntary. So anyone who was either doing some sort of writing or or website work or social media within across the whole division. But anything that's that aligned itself with communications, I invited people across the division. If you are interested in communications and you want to learn about communications, join our volunteer group. It's a community of practice. I will share with you the things I know. We will expose ourselves to uh, best practices and webinars, and we will learn together and together, we will also work as a team to achieve the goals of the division. So all these individuals in our group didn't report to me directly at the time. They they just wanted to learn more and enhance the skills and learn better. And it was a very grassroots approach. And that community of practice helped me to achieve so many goals overarchingly for the division, uh, none of which I could have done on my own. It, it showed definitively that it's about working in teams, working in groups and, and allowing people to share their ideas and their thoughts, because I am one person. I will never profess to know everything. But when I work with people and I work as a team, the best ideas percolate and we try things and not everything's a success, but we learn from it and we achieve so much. 
And that was a really, really simple approach. It didn't uh, uh, take any additional resources from the from the organization. What it did was create a group of people who wanted to learn and became sort of friends along the way. And that is probably the one thing that I'm very proud of. No matter how many uh, departments I have built and processes I have built, I have you know, develop processes that over the years an organization still exists and has evolved over time. But that one thing really, really stuck with me because at that time, I didn't know how I was going to achieve all that I had to achieve. And somehow we did it just because we all wanted to achieve and we all wanted to learn at the same time. Yeah, that's really inspiring, like to hear not only about your progress, but even your team's progress and the milestone of the of the whole team and it it, it sounds really good um and um and i have also noticed that you support equity um diversity and inclusion when we talk about teamwork as well but outside that too you uh, support that uh and in the workplace or anywhere else so how do you develop uh, communication strategies that support equity, diversity, and inclusion goals and align it with organizations' um, mission and values? So I think it's um, any communication strategy um, has to support the, of course, the organization's goals, mission, values. Um, but it also has to be very thoughtful and intentional in its approach as you're looking at EDI. Um, EDI should be integrated into everything that we do. And the first thing one has to do is really understand the principles of EDI and understand the challenges that are faced by equity deserving groups. So when I'm developing a plan, I ensure that I stay up to date on current issues and best practices as they relate to EDI. I look at the objectives that I need to achieve whatever strategy I'm writing. And then I also invite people across the organization, diverse voices. So I can get perspectives from other people, some of the, some of the things I might not be aware of. So they can help me. And of course, um, they share in that, they provide input, they make me more aware. And of course, I conduct an internal assessment of the organization, the organization's EDI approach. Um, currently with Cricket Communications, that's what I do a lot of. I, do, I conduct an internal assessment, look at the organization's strategy, what they're saying, what they're saying about EDI, and what they're saying and what they're doing. It's 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 good, good enough to say something, you need to support it with action. And of course, the most important thing is to always evaluate. So once you've completed a campaign of sorts, evaluate and continue to evaluate even while you're conducting your campaign, because sometimes you have to correct, you have to course correct, you have to revise, a message is not landing properly, you need to look at all these things. Um, the reality is an effective communication strategy is an ongoing process. Thank you so much for uh, sharing um, about uh, the inclusion and uh, how to incorporate uh, diversity, inclusion and equity. I have also noticed that you are engaged and you have also told this that you are engaged in a lot of voluntary activities apart from your actual daily job. Uh, so I was just curious to know um, how do you manage the time uh, between your regular job and the voluntary activities? And what kind of strategies do you use to ensure that you give enough attention to both your job and your voluntary work? So volunteering is very near and dear to my heart um, because I believe in giving back. And I believe the more you are in in your career, the more you grow in your career, you have learned so much more, learned so much more to share. So just like my daily work life, I block my time every day, you know, 8.30 to 5, block my work time. I do the same thing with my volunteer and activity. So as I mentioned before, I am with the IABC. Uh, it is a slightly more demanding role. Um, so what I do is during the week, after hours, maybe a certain length of time, I block certain times 
that I dedicate to learning, learning what's happening, reading all the emails from the association, but really understanding what's happening. But I use the same approach. It's very much blocking time. Sometimes on weekends, I say to myself, I'm giving myself two hours to go through emails, write what I need to do, uh, connect with people I need to connect with, just so that I stay connected with the association and do the things I need to do, whether we're putting on different um, webinars and different professional development events. And because I have a lot of connecting to do with people, I make sure I, I intentionally block time off. Um, it's not, it, it sounds a lot, but in reality, it isn't. If you, you're able to, to do a careful plan, you're able to block the time off carefully. And that's what I do. Because like I mentioned at the beginning, I too was once upon a time a newcomer. And I I didn't always get the kind of assistance that I now provide. So the fact that I'm able to, at this stage in my life, share, I want to do that. Thank you, Karen. Yes. And as a communicator, networking never stops. So uh, my next question for you is, what would be your best advice to someone, in this, com in this case, uh, a newcomer, interested in pursuing a career in communication? I would say the first thing is if they are a newcomer like Chandra in school, I would make some, I made a lot of connections through your professors, through alumni, connect with alumni, communicators, go on LinkedIn, you do all these different searches for people who have attended the program like yourself and connect with them. Um, ask their advice, just like we're talking today, ask, seek their advice on, on different ways to approach different things, whether it's a job search opportunity. Um, I would say one of the things as a newcomer is identify your goal. If you are a student, you, your goal is to complete your program and probably work. So you know what your goals are. Identify some of the companies you want to work with. Uh, and, and so you start making connections through those companies, through LinkedIn. Um, you know, my connection, you know, this the six degrees of separation, my connection to you, uh, there might be someone in that company that is in my connection, my network that you can then I can facilitate a connection. So it's very important. The underlying thing for any newcomer, for anyone really, is to build those relationships and to network, attend. Uh, associations. Um, I know CPRS and IABC, those are the key ones. The IABC is uh, very internationally renowned as a CPRS here in Canada. Um, join them as a student, connect with them, get involved in the volunteering opportunities, meet people, let people know who you are, what you're doing, and what you would like to do. Uh, anything else that you would like to add to this coffee chat, Karen? Well, you know, Chandra, it is not easy. You know, when people have to talk in front of public, they say that's the most scary thing. They'd rather like crawl in a hole and hide because speaking in public, it's almost the same thing because you don't know people, you don't know who they are, but the reality is they're feeling the same way. They also don't know. And I tell you, the easiest thing that I have found, because I was like that once upon a time, is you just, nothing is as disarming as a genuine, authentic smile. And hi, I am. It's lovely to meet you. This is what I do. And you just start a conversation. As long as you are genuine, nothing can stop anyone from chatting with you once you are smiling and you're open and you just say who you are. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karen, for lending us a little bit of your time and for teaching us more about communication, equity, diversity, and inclusion and uh, networking. Uh, uh, I would like to know how people can connect uh, with you, uh, Karen and, and Chandra. Um, people can connect with me, people, Chandra, if you have friends who would like to chat, I'm open to chatting, um, sharing whatever I know. Um, 
I don't know everything. I can also put you in touch with people who know way more than I do. And they'd be also happy to share it. So I will share that with you, Carolina, and be happy to, to connect with you anytime. Thank you so much, uh, Karen. And last but not least, uh, thank you, Chandra, for co-host this coffee chat with Professionals and Coffee. Uh, where can we find you? Everyone can connect uh, with me through LinkedIn. I'm pretty active there. So we can, um, and I guess the link will be given in the uh, screen right below. So people can connect with me and I have the same name there. And also, thank you so much, Karen, for uh, being here and providing us with all the knowledge and letting us know a little bit about you. Uh, I know there are a lot of things that uh, we can talk about you because you have experienced a lot. Um, you are a well-read person. You have uh, so much of experiences. But today, um, thank you for giving us this little bit of time to uh, know about you and uh, thank you again Carolina for um, having me here today um, thank you very much thank you everyone so everything we do here works because of you guys don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and join our social media networks currently uh, right now we are also uh, on podcast also click the link in the description below this video and please join us to do your own virtual coffee chat as Chandra did today I hope you enjoyed our discussion and learned a lot about communication EDI and networking thank you and bye bye